Hello once again, and welcome to another chapter of this Pro Tools tutorial playlist. So today we're going to be talking about effects. We're going to talk about insert effects versus audio suite effects. Uh, you're going to want to watch closely on this one if you want to do any EQing, any high shell filters, low shell filters, uh, reverb, delay, or any sort of effects that makes your clip a little sweeter or a little more psychedelic. So here we go. First, I'm going to just start a new session and record a voice in there. Let's call this Camtasia Tutorial FX. All right. And remember, wave file, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, and our last use input output settings. And of course, interleaved, because we will be recording stereo files and we want them to be interleaved and not dual mono. This is easier that way. And I'm going to be putting this into my Avid folder. Keep everything there just for organization's sake. You can do whatever you want. Okay, number one. I like to remember double check my playback engine. I'm using the Scarlet, so that's good. And my buffer size is nice and high, so I'll hopefully get less hardware issues. That does make more latency, but it also makes your system just run a little bit smoother. So I'm going to keep it like that. Okay, so first we want to create a new track. You can also hit uh, Shift Command N for this. And I'm gonna create one new mono track called VO. And you can hit the plus sign here. And I'm gonna create also a new stereo track that's going to be music. Okay, and hit Create. And look, I've got a VO track that's mono and a music track so I'm going to be recording audio onto the VO track so here's how that works so uh, first we want to go up here and basically uh, modify our edit window view selector you can also go up here to edit window views um, or this is a shortcut right here in the window itself click on that and this will allow us you want to watch uh, right here, inserts, look at that, I now have a new column. This is where I can add effects, they're called inserts in Pro Tools, and input output. And we can also open up the sends, we'll be talking about that later. Okay, so input output. Input is basically where the audio is going to be coming in. You only really have to worry about this in this case if you're recording, which I'm going to be with my trusty Scarlet. And output basically is the output uh, so we can hear what we're doing. So input, output. Input is my Scarlet. Output is um, basically my Scarlet output. So everything's going through my Scarlet. With you, maybe it's a built-in output. So let's go ahead and record something. First, uh, this is what we call our track record enable. I can actually record onto multiple tracks at once, as you can see, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do the one. Um, and then we go up to our transport window up here. We record, we basically hit record, and as you, but it's not going to stop start recording unless we hit the play button. So here we go. Watch your time go here. And now we're recording. One, two, three, one, two, three. Recording on the Scarlet 2i2 box with the Shure, what is this? The Shure PGA 48. Good basic mic for this sort of thing. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then we hit stop. And as you might recall, everything we record or import into Pro Tools gets put into the audio folder. So let's just double check that that is there. Uh, let's see here, Avid, boom, boom. Look at that, audio files, there it is, right there. How cool is that? Nice and organized. And here is my Pro Tools session. Okay, so if we listen to this, and now we're recording. One, two, three, one, two, three. Recording on the Scarlet 2i2 box with the Shure 
Okay, so it sounds all right. It sounds a little, uh, what's the word? A little dry. Maybe I want to add a little bit of reverb. So there's a couple things we can do. We can add an insert. So basically over here, these basically are just, we have, we could, we can, right now we basically can have up to five insert effects applied to this track. One, two, three, four, five. So we click on this, boom. And then you get this new little sub menu. And if you click on plugins, what you'll see is that you've got a whole selection that's subcategorized by EQ. So if you want to make your deep frequencies louder or quieter, your high frequencies louder or quieter, or bust or um, pump up the midtone so your voice is more out there, you can do that here. There's different kinds. There's a, there's what we call a seven band EQ, which gives us basically seven bands that, to play with. There, I just raised up the um, the low frequencies. Here, I'm raising up the high frequencies. Or maybe I want to do what's called a high pass filter, which means the higher frequencies pass by and by applying what's called a shelf to the low frequency. This is good if we um, basically have low rumble, like, like a refrigerator running in the background or maybe a jackhammer going on outside or any sort of like low rumble in the background. You can basically quiet that down by adding an EQ insert and basically playing with the uh, basically playing with this graph here until you get it just right. So let's hear what this sounds like. You're like, what is this going to sound like? Well, um, as you can see, it's on our track right now. So let's play it and see how it turns out. Oh, and you might have noticed. You see how I still have levels here because I left the record enable enabled. So in order for that to, we should always basically unenable that if we're not messing with it, just because we don't want to accidentally record over what we've uh, already recorded. So we can hit play and now we're recording. One, two, three, one, two, three. Recording on the yeah. Scarlet 2i2 box with the Shure. And you can also do this. Let's pump up the mid-tone or the uh, mid-frequencies. Let's listen to this bit right here because it's louder. A48, good basic listen mic for this sort of thing. One, two, three, one, two, three. Hear that? So I could hear A48. I could hear the results of my work in real time with an insert effect. A48, good basic mic for this sort of thing. One, two, three, one, two, three. See, I made it sound really tinny, almost like an AM radio. A this is a really good way to do basically uh, AM radio effects. What you can do is you basically cut out the low frequencies, cut out the high frequencies, so only the mids are there. You basically are taking all the life out of the voice by taking out all that richness of the deep end and all the crispness of the high end, and then you've got something that sounds like an AM radio, like this. And now we're recording. One, two, three, one, two, three. Recording on the Scarlet oh, more 2i2 like a box with the Shure... What is this? Yeah. And then on, so what's cool about this is you can add even more effects. So say I like that effect for some crazy reason, but I wanted some reverb on it. I could take some reverb. Uh, air reverb is good. D-verb is good. Let's just go to air reverb just to see what that looks like. Okay. Here's air reverb. The cool thing is you've got lots of uh, presets. If you click on this, you've got... Uh, concert hall, stadium, drum room, vintage, cathedral, opera, infinite. Oh God, what does that sound like? Uh, or you could just make your own. These are all different parameters of reverb. There's something called pre-delay. There's something called balance. There's something called mix. This is a very important, um, basically, uh, parameter to adjust. Almost every effect has some sort of mix adjustment. Basically what a mix is, it mixes the effect to whether it's completely dry, which means it has no effect at all, or completely wet, which means that what you're basically hearing is all effect. Um, it's good to basically just sort of play around and see what sounds best to you. Why don't we just go to factory, re um, 
uh, preset to a cathedral. Okay, let's hear what this sounds like. Hear that? Pretty cool, huh? But that's at 100%. All effects, you can't even really hear the crisp original recording at all. So let's make it dry. And now we're recording. It's not one, it's two, like three, I didn't even one, do two, anything. Three, record. And check this out. While it's playing, you can affect the parameters while it's playing so you can listen to your changes in real time. And now we're recording. One, two, three, one, two, three. Recording on the Scarlet 2i2 box. So 35% seems pretty good. Room size, if that's too big of a cathedral, I could bring it down. So I still have some reverb, just not as much. And now we're recording. One, two, three, one, two, three. There's also pre delay. And now we're recording. One, two, three, one, two, three. Record. Pre delay basically adds a little bit of delay before the reverb. So the reverb doesn't just uh, reverb your own voice, it reverbs your voice and a delay of your voice. So it's like one, one, two, 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 three, 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 three. It adds a little more of an echo effect, basically. Um, and you've got so many of these pitch shifting. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. <laughs> you've got so many of these. Uh, there's harmonics, you can add distortion. This is more music stuff, but it does interesting things to your voices. Let's see what this sounds like. Fat bass drum. And now we're recording. One, two, three, one, see? two, three. Recording it's kind of distortion. It's kind of kind of sounding like my levels are too high, because they are. <laughs> so there's different things you can do. Uh, this is what we call inserts. Uh, in the next chapter, we'll get into audio suite effects, which is very similar to inserts, except it's you have to render them. They're not real time, which actually has an advantage. So tune into the next chapter and I'll show you what I mean.